hello friends today's question is can you prove these relations using calculus so just try it if you can and meanwhile we will go to the solution first we'll go to the simple intuition between the differential calculus and the difference calculus let's see in the differential calculus we usually denote the variable with x such that it may represent any number like 1 2 3 as integers or some real numbers like 1.21 3.24 or any irrational or rational numbers but in difference calculus we generally denote the variable with n because it represents only the integral values like 1 2 3 and so on and for the powers of n i'm going to use a notation of parenthesis so let's see how we can write x squared x squared can be written as x times x plus 1 times 0 I'm writing this in this pattern because you'll find the difference between this calculus and the difference calculus. Let's see how we can write n squared with parenthesis. It can be written as n times n plus 1 times 1 equals n times n plus 1. So from this example you can see the relation between difference calculus and differential calculus. In differential calculus we are talking about infinitesimally small change or which tends to zero but in difference calculus we are referring to the change by the amount of unit or one so we'll get n n plus one by saying n squared let's see another example and you will be totally clear let's see for x cubed can be written in this way and n cube with parenthesis in difference calculus can be represented in this way let's look just look at the pattern the steps increase from 1 to 2 but the difference is of unit length so 1 is kept constant everywhere so this will result in n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 so from now onwards whenever I use a parenthesis in the power that means we are referring to the difference calculus and n cube with parenthesis will represent this value and not n cube so you can generalize this relation for any power like x to the 4 or x to the 5 and n to the 4 with parenthesis and n to the 5 with parenthesis and so on after knowing this intuition let's go to the integration in differential calculus the integral of x to the power of 1 will be x squared by 2 it's quite simple just add 1 to the power and bring that power to the denominator and this can be represented as x times x plus 1 times 0 by 2 as shown earlier and what happens in difference calculus let's see I'm representing this integral with a star sign to represent it is a integral in difference calculus it also has got the same formula as that of the differential calculus the power is raised to the power of 1 and the power is written in the denominator and which will be equal to n times n plus 1 times 1 by 2 as shown earlier and this is quite interesting to know that which is equal to n times n plus 1 by 2 and if we write this integral in terms of our general notation this integration is nothing but the summation integral from 0 to n is summation from 0 to n and uh, we have already read that n with parenthesis 1 is equal to n in our general notation and this result is n and plus 1 by 2 so we got the first relation very easily let's look another example in differential calculus the integral of x squared will be x cubed by 3 and the same is in the difference calculus the integration from 0 to n of n squared with parenthesis equals n cubed by 3 with parenthesis and this can be written as like this so which we have already discussed earlier so in normal representation what we can write this integral is nothing but summation from 0 to n n squared in differential calculus can be written as n times n plus 1 so this summation will be equal to this value so what we came to the conclusion is that 
in difference calculus n to the power of 1 is equal to n n squared will be equal to this value n cube is equal to this value and the formula for integration works the same as in differential calculus then let's find the value for summation n squared to find summation n squared we just integrate from 0 to n the value of n squared but we cannot use the rule of integration when there is no parenthesis in n so we will first convert it into the parenthesis form or the difference form so n squared can be written as n times n plus 1 minus n now since n n plus 1 is equal to n squared with parenthesis and n is equal to n to the power of 1 with parenthesis so we can write in this form now we can use the formula for integration to get this result the integration of n squared is n cubed by 3 and the integration of n to the 1 is n squared by 2 and again since n cubed can be written by this value and n squared can be written this value so we will get this result and after simplification we will reach this result and finally we will reach to the value and this is nothing but the summation of 0 to n of n squared so which is the required sum and talking about sum we are going to talk the sum from the first term to the nth term but we are getting here the sum from 0 to the nth term if you look at the term 0 the first term is always 0 so the summation from 0 to n is always equal to the summation from 1 to n so which is the required formula so using the same method can you try finding summation of the nth term from 1 to n of n cubed so just dive into the depth of mathematics and you'll see calculus everywhere so thanks for watching